It's definitely picking time. All right, so today we are learning this picking exercise that is going to focus on all kinds of different facets of your picking hand. Because I think one of the biggest things that happens to us when we're learning, especially the more scale kind of picking stuff, is it's all very much the same. It lacks a lot of the dynamics that your right hand can kind of deliver on the strings. So this one has all kinds of stuff, string skipping, speed up, slow downs, single note lines, it's got it all. So let's talk about it. The lick starts right here, kind of outlining this G sus4 arpeggio. You're gonna play 12th fret on the G. And I'm viewing this all out of our kind of like C major scale. Right there. So you start on 12th fret of the G, and then you're gonna go to 10th fret on the high E string. So already we're implementing a string skip. Then I go to 8th fret. Now let me watch my picking hand. The way I'm doing this is I pick down on the first note, down on the second note. So I have two downs in a row, so I'm crossing over that B string. Then I go to eighth fret on the high string. So almost like an economy style of picking right off the bat. Okay, get the volume down a little bit. Now all we do is we basically move everything up one string. And it becomes a D sus4 arpeggio. So 12th fret on the D now, 10th fret on the B, and then eighth fret on the high string. Notice my picking hand stays the same. Down, down, up, down, down, up. Now the next part here implements kind of this speed up all of a sudden. I love guys like Key Marcello, who has this ability to gradually speed up versus just being fast or slow all the time. Then you're gonna go. Okay. Here are the speed, it drifts. It's not always just that same kind of linear sound. Okay, so after you come out of that, you land on 10th fret of the D. And here comes that speed up part I'm talking about. 12th fret. Right there. Boom, see how the speed drifts. It's, it's not that linear sound that we have. So you're gonna go 12th fret on the D, 9th to 10th fret on the G. Then you're gonna go 8th fret, 12th fret, and 10th fret on the B. Then back to 10th fret on the G. Okay, right there, that stuff is so crucial to including those dynamics into your right hand. Now, what we do is repeat the first passage again. Now here, I'm gonna add a different tail end to it. Same kind of idea, the speeding up and slowing down, but we're gonna go nine, 10, 12 on the G. 10, nine. Then you're gonna to go to the D string and you're gonna go 12, 10, nine, right there. This is, this is much more of like a scale kind of sound, straight through the scale, so. Okay, so there's the first two of them. I love this next part, the way it transitions to minor. We're gonna go. Okay, so I'm just simply going to 12th fret on the A string. Then I go to 10th fret on the G. 9th fret on the G. Same idea as that first thing, still string skipping, the down, down, up style picking. And it's kind of like an A minor flat six, is that a chord? It, that's what it would be, I guess. Move up a string, 12th fret on the low E string, and then 10, nine on the D. Again, mirroring just a string higher. Then 10th fret on the low E string, so. Now here, I implement something else. We're doing single note per string ideas. So you're gonna go 10th fret, or sorry, 8th fret on the low E string to 10th fret on the A, 12th fret on the G. It's like a C sus two. Okay, so. Now you're gonna go to 10th fret on the D, 9th fret on the D, 10th fret on the A, so. Same kind of speed up, slow down idea, but now it's just one note per string, so. Okay. Ending on that eighth fret of the low E string. Okay, and the final little passage here repeats the first half. 
and then adds a little tail, and that's it. Again, that kind of dynamic approach to the speed factor. So we're gonna go 8, 10, 12, 10, 8, the low E string, 12, 10, 8. And you have it. All together, real nice and slow. So what's the big takeaway with learning something like this? I really think that you should be able to incorporate a lot of different speed mechanics and dynamics from your right hand. Also, when you're learning a big old piece of music like this, make sure you learn it in chunks. You can learn little passages from this and just break it down into smaller pieces. So other than that, I'm gonna bounce it out of here, guys. If you would, hit the subscribe button. I'll be seeing you all later. And end it bluesy picking hand style. Ha, ha, ha.